Uh oh. Good afternoon friends, welcome back. Uh, I was about to get all the new stuff that we've just received in the mail out and lay it out on the ground here and be like, look, check it out. But um, as you can see behind me, I think we're about to get drenched. So that may not be the best idea right now. Before we lose the sun and get drenched, let's go check out the asphalt so I can show you guys in the daytime. It turned out really cool. So there is still quite a bit more to go on this. We have to get the retaining wall guy, who's a separate contractor in, uh, to cut out these parts of the wall here and then put in retaining walls, which I think they're gonna be aluminium and concrete. So that'll reinforce all of that. Uh, so if you're wondering why that kind of doesn't look finished yet, that is why. Once the retaining wall guy has done his thing, Ty will be heading back out to do the tar asphalt top layer and probably the rest of this driveway here which will also just get uh, asphalted. But this is like solid as. That's a lock diff. <laughs> First car to park up here, S14. I made a little car wash bucket stand because I didn't want my buckets and my sponges and all my soaps running away on me because it is on a slope. See the rain's coming in over here. There's a whole bunch of mountains behind those mountains that have disappeared. Yeah, you might be able to see a tiny bit of the mountains out there. Let's see if we can see inside the shed. It may be a little too dark because we don't have any lights in here just yet. But my camera's boss apparently. Coco! Coco! 10 points for anybody that gets a reference. <laughs> Hopefully start setting that up later this week. All the drainage is now done. Oh, all the important parts of the drainage. Where we've got to get some more rocks and we're just gonna cover this whole back area in rocks. That way it has a filtration system for any silt, dirt, um, anything that's gonna wash down. It won't obstruct any of the water flow. And there you have it. Big driveway, big access, decent parking, decent side shed. Start using. There's a bit of a size reference of how big the shed is compared to the cars. <laughs> the 14 looks kind of small. It's going to be amazing getting all of the cars away, all under shelter, all in the same area in one spot next to each other, not have them scattered all over the place. All right, let's go check out what we got in the mail. The rain may have dropped the majority of the water over the mountain. So we might get lucky here and we might not actually get wet. Which would be great, because then I can get out all the stuff and show you. Big thank you to Golby's Parts up in Toowoomba. I got a massive order off them. I also got, check these out. Ba -ba -room! Holy grail of interiors. I could not help myself. I had to get the HKS R32 BNR floor mats. They are for a GDR, so they do have this little bit here. I think it's probably for the, the all drive system. Loving the floor mats, loving the color scheme, and the interior is starting to look really, really awesome. If you guys have been in the local scene for a while over here, you know JDM Garage. They are great. They get all their stuff from Japan, uh, and whatever they don't have, they can usually get on back order, which is great. Also, EFI Solutions. The guys are insane. I don't know where they get some of their stuff, but they've got so much old, new factory OEM parts, and. Uh, bits and seals and clips and uh, rad supports, lines, so much. Like I, I saw a brand new uh, <laughs> clutch dampener of all things uh, on EFI and some clips. They get little clips for the side skirts. These are $6.60 each, but they have them. Uh, they have brand new little toggles. So if you've broken them like this, 
you can buy just that little bit instead of having to buy the whole fascia. Same with these guys, which a lot of the time these break. And this guy. This is my, my prototype though, so <laughs> don't worry, this is not the one I'm using. So I hit up EFI Solutions and I bought brand new ones of these. You can also get brand new ones of these guys, which all my trims need replacing, but they're quite expensive, so I've got to do them in little bits and pieces. But all of them you can get on EFI. It's amazing. There's so many of these are damaged or old. Mine have overspray on them. They're like little guys like this. I think you can buy that trim as well. Super, super helpful for anybody doing a resto or wanting to clean their cars up or that bought a shell and have to put everything back together. So we've got the HKS floor mats. I also splurged when the FD RX-7 sold. I went out and I found SR2 Hornets. So these are Recaros. These are OG 90s era goodness and they're amazing. I love the look of them. I love the feel of them. I think they're very comfortable. Um, and I've always had them at the back of my mind wanting a pair and putting them in an appropriate car that would suit. I finally have the color combo in the car that I can put them in. So I found a pair online that came out of a 32 GDR and they're in beautiful condition. You do have a little bit of wear on some of the silver bits here, but I think that's just specifically the material and you can also get replacement material from a Recaro. So not a big drama, but these are so new feeling. They came out of a GTR with, I think under 76,000 kilometers on them. So apart from the driver's seat having a very minor bit of wear, the rest of them are in fabulous condition and they're so comfy. EFI and JDM Garage also had brand new vents. I finally have non-cracked, beautiful vents. I'm covering them over because I'm paranoid they're going to crack in the sun again. Sorry, apparently I'm getting messages. I got another one over there too. Hold on. And I got another one. I finally have a passenger air vent. I don't look like a hobo anymore. Or like a full missile. Very soon, gonna get this Caldozelli head unit in. It's just sitting there at the moment because this is still off and my gear knob is not on yet because we're doing the gearbox now. So I've shown you guys the HKS floor mats and the new air vents, which are sick. This is the rest of it. So first off, a lot of this is from Golby's Parts. Massive nice thank you to them. Thank you so much, Golby's. You have hooked me up so well with what I'm going to need to finish this off. And I cannot wait to get this into this and to turn that key. It's going to be sick. Trix's Parts. Trix helped me out with a center console, a new one, because my other one I've done a prototype wrap on I wasn't happy with, so I wanted another one to uh, just to paint over. We've got a rear hatch panel seals off the cabin from the boot. Uh, mine's currently missing, I don't know why, but we've got one of those. I also, I don't have the box here, but I also got some lower uh, kick panels from Skyline Spares. Thank you very much, guys. They rocked up all nice and good. Uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff from EFI. So we've got the Trixus Parts bits. We have Mitch's Garage, who sent me through some bits and pieces. We've got some purple T5 and T10 LED lights, as well as some L-shaped uh, valves for the E-wings on the 240Z. So my, my Datsun has, uh, <laughs> if you guys follow the Datsun stuff, you'll know that we need new valves. We finally have them. Thank you, Mitch's Garage. Uh, we also got lower rad rubbers, which is great because we're gonna need them for the new Phoenix. And we have a carpet thing for the HKS mats. We've got a violet purple HKS turbo timer, because why not? I got two turbos, I might as well have some fun with them. Now, non-negotiable, I told you guys a few weeks ago that we need a new starter mode and a new alternator from Golby's. We've got the upgraded 150 amp alternator, which is awesome. And we have a new starter. You guys know what the starter looks like, but ba -ba -dum. If you're going in JZ, just do yourself a favor and upgrade your alternator. Especially if you're gonna run, like I am, gonna run um, upgraded thermos and they're gonna need all the power they can get. We had Matsuri last weekend. So while we're at Matsuri, I ended up getting myself a, a Valino long shirt um, for track days from Dory Junkie, as well as this Ebisu Circuit Matsuri Valino collab nobody for the new shed. So we're gonna make the shed look cool. We also got to catch up with Joybreak. Joybreak is a local Australian company that make really cool old school retro stuff. They do old shirts, old bomber jackets, uh, old merchandise, gear knobs, stickers, a whole bunch of stuff. 
check them out if you haven't already. Um, but we got a Trust Gretty style gear knob off them and they do like custom stickers on the top here. So you can get the Nismo, uh, they do like a joy break equivalent of the Trust Gretty style um, and you can get them in all different colors, pink, uh, black, gold, a whole bunch. So yeah, I just wanted a nice, heavy, sturdy gear knob for this. I do have a likewise, uh, like a grippy, like a bike, like a BMX bike gear knob. It's purple. It looks cool, but I think he's gonna rip my hands up to be honest. So I wanted something that I know and trust and I've had in, in some of my other cars. I've actually got a Trust Gretty one of these in the 240Z um, and I love it. So thank you, Joy Break. We have crank angle sensor, which for whatever reason was missing on my J. So I've bought another one from Golby's. We've got alternate plugs for the j -Lec alternator. So depending on what alternator you get, um, or what plug you choose to use and what harness you have and that kind of thing, you can have uh, round plugs, square plugs or um, that kind of plug, which is a, a rectangular plug as well. Now we went big, we got a Haltech. This is my first ever Haltech ECU that I have ever, 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 ever bought myself. Because I'm not rich, I'm always poor. <laughs> and I'm always struggling to buy car parts, especially brand new ones. So this for me is like Christmas right now. I, I'm very happy and you know, over the moon about it. Warning, performance enhancing. Welcome to the family, etc. etc. Now I pulled this out of the box already and I've already put stickers on it. I'm sorry, Haltech. I'm glad I get to run your stuff, but I wanted to make it a little custom. We've got the Haltech sticker and they've got the power and the status. I put a Loki SX sticker on top of it and we've got a nice little drift stain golden plaque on the bottom. Just so I know it's mine and so if this ever comes off when I'm tuning it, it doesn't get lost with Benz or any of the other cars around here. And I know it's mine. So we got the Haltech Elite 2500 and it has the inbuilt map sensor. Now I went all out with Haltech. I didn't want to screw around mix and matching things. I tried to stay as much with one brand as I could with this car. So we've gone for predominantly Haltech, including a full Haltech uh, terminated engine harness. So full engine loom to a degree. I need to do the uh, core pack loom myself and the starter alternator loom as well. But um, that, that is amazing. That takes so much time out of having to do this and to make a full custom one. So that's sweet. So this is gonna be super, super helpful and save me so much time with my loom. So I am so glad that Haltech actually do stock them and that Golby's sell this all. You can buy all this as a package from Golby's Parts. So please jump on the website and check them out. And you can score all the stuff that you need for your build with minimal hassle. All right, what's this guy? What do you reckon? Oh, ba -da -da. So we've got a Haltech WB1 wideband. This can be daisy chained with other widebands as well. But yeah, we've got the O2 sensor, we've got the little harness, and we get the bung for the exhaust as well. So nice and hassle free there. And that plugs straight into the loom as well. So nothing has to be changed, nothing has to be cut. I don't have to customize anything. I can literally just plug and play all this, which is excellent. Now I'm most likely gonna run flex fuel with the JZ and the 32. So I went out and I bought myself a flex fuel uh, AFR gauge. So this shows me the ethanol percentage as well as the AFR reading in the gauge. And that is from Siltec. Siltec is also another cool brand um, and I'm using quite a few of their products on the JZ already, like the Siltec IEC, which goes underneath the intake. Um, and this will be super helpful and will go very well with all the Haltech stuff. Got the flex fuel sensor, also from Siltec. That's again for running uh, 98 and ethanol. So I can do it all very safely. That's its little bracket. Now, when I bought the HKS floor mats, they gave me a 50th anniversary badge, which I think is sick. You get these with the HKS uh, limited edition steering wheel, which they've just released the second collab edition of. If you want to get yourself that HKS steering wheel, it's around 1350 from Golby's, or you might be able to get directly from HKS in Japan, or there is also HKS Australia uh, at Slacks Creek. So there is a local distributor in Queensland for HKS. Um, you may, may be able to go through them as well. I went through Golby's and Golby's has just restocked the HKS steering wheels after I just bought the floor mats. And I'm just sitting on my computer like, no, don't do this to me. <laughs> so there goes the next month of my savings. I kind of really want to get that steering wheel. Um, all right, getting back to what we're doing. We've got the Haltech loom. Now, I am not gonna pull this out right now because it's got a lot to it, as you can see just here. We'll get into that in another vlog. All right, we are losing the light a little here. I do apologize on doing this in an early evening, but um, I'll show you the radiator. So these are awesome radiators. They're what you call a dual pass. Now, dual pass, you might be able to see this through the bag. They have had two cores welded together. 
so that the, the, the flow of the water comes in, goes across, comes down, and then goes back across. It doesn't just come in, go down, and then back out. When you do a JZ swap, you need around 3200 CFM of uh, air getting through your radiator to keep the JZ cool, drifting, and not overheat, and all that kind of stuff. Um, AU thermos are usually the go-to, the budget go-to, really good. However, there sometimes might be issues with space or availability if you are not in this country. Um, I don't, obviously I don't think they have fat AUs overseas. But yeah, if you can, go all out. Get yourself the best cooling setup that you can possibly afford. Um, or get your, look into your dual cores, your dual passes, or your triple cores, and try and get as much space in that bay as you can. So try and aim for pull fans. You don't want to be using push fans. They just don't get enough CFM through the radiator. My advice would be go for twin 12-inch thermo fans that can push at least 2,000 CFM. I know that's a lot. Uh, the average that you get twin 12 inch thermos is around 1250 CFM. Try and get as high as you can, 1700 CFM minimum. Um, but yeah, if you can get anything above 3200 CFM for the pair, great, all the better. So recently I've done a bit of research and I found a company called Derail. They do thermo fans that run 4000 CFM with a uh, ducted shroud. So we've gone and we've gotten the Phoenix dual pass radiator from Golby's. We're going to run this and then we're going to get some derail twin 12 inch thermos with the shroud and we're going to try and make this cooling setup as efficient as possible. I'll show you where this goes in a minute but we are running very low on light so 